Last time we finished the drywall work. Today we'll prepare the wood that will later cover our walls. Enjoy! A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Hello, woodworkers and also mathematicians. To the next episode in the series on making my studio, my new studio, look and sound good. And one key to making everything look good is gonna be this huge amount of maple that I've got here. What I wanna do is, I did the drywall thing. Um, or I should rather say, I'm going to do the whole drywall um, upgrade down there in my basement and then we are going to paint the drywall, we are going to add some paper, wallpaper to the whole thing and then we are also going to cover everything in this nice maple wood. Um, maple, cool thing about that, we are going to have a pretty dark studio but the maple wood is pretty whitish to be honest. Even if you stain it, it's gonna have like a yellowish sheen to it but other than that it's a very very bright wood. And this is going to be a lot of work. We are going to turn most of this stuff into boards. 150 boards in total, length 1 meter, 10 centimeters high and also 1 centimeter in thickness. This means what we are going to do is we are going to prepare all the lumber first. We are going to give everything a straight edge on my sliding table saw. Then I'm going to... Um, really depends. Um, then I'm going to cut everything into strips, this is the next thing I'm going to do, which are going to be um, a bit shy of 10 centimeters, like 11 centimeters, over on my bench saw. We are going to cut it into strips and those strips are going to be squared off using my jointer over there. And with those um, squared off, what we can do after that is cut all of those little blanks, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of work into little boards, which are gonna be rough at first, rough sawn due to the bend saw, but then we are going to let everything run through either Olga, my thickness planer, or my trunk sander over there. And I hope you are going to enjoy the process. It's gonna be a lot of work for me. It's just gonna be a few minutes of your life for you, but it's gonna be so fucking worth it once we are done. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? All right, let's do this. To create small boards, I first need to turn all those live edged pieces of maple into dimensional lumber with one straight side each. My sliding table saw and its sliding table make quick work of that. Then I set my band source fence to be just proud of the mentioned 8cm of board width and got to cutting, ending me up with thick, luscious maple wood planks. Mmm, maple. Am I the only one that gets really hungry when thinking about the Canadian sugar water? I think it's time for a snack. Gladly, today's video has been sponsored by HelloFresh, so I won't die of my hunger bar running out. I know for a fact that most of you are male students of ages 18 to 26. At least that's what my YouTube analytics tells me and I know exactly which type of person you are. You are living off instant noodles in your mom's basement, malnutritioned and too lazy to move your ass into the kitchen. But with HelloFresh this could become a thing of the past, taking the hassle out of cooking convoluted meals by delivering pre-portioned ingredients and easy to prepare recipes right to your door. Not only is it hella convenient to use, no, it's also on average 25% less expensive than buying all the ingredients individually in your local grocery store. And in my opinion, the best part about HelloFresh is that it keeps your taste buds on their toes with 40 different recipes and over 100 seasonal and convenience items to choose from each week. With so much variety, there are options for everyone and every lifestyle. So why wait any longer? 
Once again, thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video and also make sure to use my personal link at the top of the description as well as the code that you see down there at checkout to get a special discount. Now back to the shop. May I introduce you? This right here is my good friend, Frank. And let me tell you one or two things about Frank. So Frank just loves to eat wood, a lot of wood, just like his daddy Jens loves to eat a lot of pussy. This is Frank, he, he's destroying wood. He's razor sharp, he has a very, very fast spinning pile of knives attached to it and if your finger runs into there they actually get cut off quite nicely this is how um, the so-called jointers are designed so if you get your fingers in there they are just going to be cut off very cleanly so your head, whole hand can get sucked into the thing but as I have heard it's supposed to uh, kind of hurt if you get your hand in there so I'm trying to not get my hands cut off um, I have dealt with Frank quite a lot and what he's going to do is He's going to, with a bit of black woodworking magic, get one side completely flat, nice and flat. And then we can use its fence in a 90 degree angle to get one of the uh, sides next to it perpendicular. Um, this is what Frank is going to do. We're going to do this with all pieces. It's going to take a while, but it's going to be worth it. So this is going to save us a lot of sanding in the long run for the parts which are going to go against the wall. So let's go ahead and get started and let's test Frank for today. Don't worry, it's just going to be a tiny little bit loud. Not too loud, it's approximately as loud as a helicopter starting right next to your face. So yeah, just be aware of that. As mentioned, I'll get one face per board flat, which i later run against the bend source fence as a reference for resawing. All right, next up, the resawing process. If you don't know what resawing is, it's basically uh, taking lumber, dimensional lumber or the like, and turning it into thinner boards. Resawing boards is the first step to really get your woodworking going. In a normal case, you buy your wood from a lumber yard and just hope that it's fine. And if it's too thick, you have to basically just plane everything down and lose a lot of wood. But with resawing, you have so many options. You can turn thick boards into thinner boards, making two out of one and so on. It's, it's like the Banachtaski paradox, just with the fact that wood is still being used and not infinitely there. That's a bummer, am I right? Yeah, and this is what we are going to do. I'm gonna let this flat side from the planer run to the fence and then we are going to get boards, which are going to be, um, yeah, one centimeter in thickness approximately a bit more because we need to plane it down or rather sand it down over my drum sander next but now i have a lot of things to do 150 boards that means 194 cuts in a normal case but i'm gonna get a tiny little bit of life edge or just rough sawn um, end part so that means i still have to do um, 150 cuts that's a lot that is so much. That is so fucking much. No, it's even more than 150. Oh my goodness. It's way more. Oh, god, god. Don't want to talk about it. Don't want to calculate. Just get to cutting. <laughs> me no good at math, but me good at woodworking. This part literally took three hours in total. It was painful. And you think that three hours was much though? What about approximately seven hours <laughs> of running boards through my drum sander? Roughly three runs per face. One meter long boards. So six runs per board. Six meters. And what you're seeing is the actual speed of the sanding. 
Fuck my life. Once that was finally done, I then used a piece of plywood attached to my table saw to act as a makeshift jointer to get one side of each board perfectly straight. After that, I was able to get the opposite side parallel by just running the straight side along my fence. And with that, we are done for today's episode. It was a lot of work. And in the next one, we'll see how the wood will combine visually with the drywall that we'll also paint too. So thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more mathematics and also DIY content, I suppose. <laughs> and please stay safe. Ciao!